In this video, we're going to look at making nitrocellulose, also known as gun cotton, also known as flash paper and flash cotton, and there's other names I've seen. Gun cotton was first discovered by a German-Swiss chemist known as Christian Schoenbein in 1846 by accident. Apparently, he had spilled both nitric and sulfuric acids on his tabletop and used an apron to wipe it up. He was wearing the apron. It was made of cotton, and the next day, um, it somehow lit and burned up almost completely within a few seconds. So, yeah, that's an interesting way to find out a completely new process. It's been used in rockets, mild explosives, printing ink, and if you mix it with camphor early on, it was used to make billiard balls. And I put the questions mark there because I can't imagine what would happen after you knocked a few of these billiard balls around. That's probably why it's not being used anymore. It's typically made by mixing sulfuric and nitric acids and then soaking cellulose, which could be cotton, paper, or wood pulp, in the mixed acids for a period of time, then washing the acids off of it, letting it dry, and what you have left at the end is gun cotton or nitrocellulose. There's several reactions that occur during uh, the process of making gun cotton. I'm going to go over them right now. Uh, the first one is simply mixing the sulfuric and nitric acids together. Nothing else is in there. You end up with a proton switch from here to here, so you end up with HSO4 negative and H2NO3 plus. Then, the H2NO3 plus undergoes degradation into H2O, water, and NO2 plus. And this NO2 plus is a nitronium ion. This nitronium ion, if the, if the heat is high enough, is released into the air as nitrogen dioxide. And that's why in these reactions you keep them cold. When you keep them cold, the nitronium ion stays in solution where it can work. If it gets too warm, you end up releasing nitrogen dioxide. This nitronium ion, when it's kept in solution, nitrates the alcohol groups on the cellulose to form the ester COnO2. And it is this ester right here, when it's combined at multiple sites on the cellulose, that makes it burn as rapidly as it does. I drew out um, a simple cellulose molecule. It's cross-linked here with an oxygen. Cellulose can involve many cross-links. This is just one to show exactly what's happening. And you can see that at every carbon, there's usually a hydrogen or an OH group. You can see it here, again, here, again, except for the carbon closest to each other where there's just a hydrogen attached to either end here with the oxygen combining these two uh, into one piece, basically. So we're looking at the OH groups and I chose one over here, just random, which is attached to the corner here. And again, each of these corners have a carbon. So I drew out the carbon right there. So this OH group is attached on top here, the hydrogen's on the bottom here. If you move over one carbon, then you have the hydrogen on top, OH on the bottom, move over one more carbon, OH on top, hydrogen on the bottom, and so on and so forth. So let's take this OH group, and I rewrote it over here with the carbon it's attached to, this carbon and that carbon are the same, and this hydrogen and this hydrogen are the same. This NO2 right here is the nitronium ion, again, that was just produced up here. It attacks this OH group, especially this oxygen, where it has a lone pair of electrons. And when it does that, uh, the hydrogen is released, and it combines with the HSO4- minus to form HHSO4, which is also known as H2SO4. So the sulfuric acid is a catalyst in this reaction, and as a catalyst, it's not used up. It's just there to help the reaction move forward. And so it's initially used up here and then eventually reformed when it takes the hydrogen off of this OH group to form the H2SO4. When the nitronium attacks this oxygen, it bonds to it. So if you follow this down here now, you have this carbon, which is the same as this and this, with the hydrogen, same as these two also. So this carbon is now also combined with the oxygen up here, which was also up here and now it's attached to the nitronium ion, and you end up with CONO2, CONO2, which is the same, of course, as what we talked about up here. So this is the ester combination right here that occurs on all of these OH groups here. So the entire molecule is nitrated if you keep the temperature down and keep this nitronium ion in solution rather than being released as nitrogen dioxide. For the materials we need to perform this right here, we need 98% H2SO4 sulfuric acid, 70% HNO3 nitric acid. We need cotton. I'm going to start with 5 grams. I'm going to use a 250 milliliter beaker. We need some water at the end to wash out the acids or use an acid neutralizer, which could be sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, or even sodium hydroxide works. In our methods, you've probably noticed I added something here, and that is 
a little shallow pan of ice water, which this 250 milliliter beaker will be in the entire time we do this until we wash the uh, cotton at the end. The idea keeping the temperature less than 10 degrees Celsius to keep this nitronium ion in solution. So the first thing we're going to do is add our 150 milliliters of our nitric acid and secondarily add our 100 milliliters of sulfuric acid. If we do this in reverse, the nitric acid is not as heavy, the molecular weight is not as much as the sulfuric acid, and it will sit on the top, therefore heating up and causing this to sputter and spat and so on, and you have hot acid nitric coming out at you. So you never want that. You always want to do the reverse and put your nitric acid in first and then your sulfuric acid. Once you've gently stirred your acids and got them mixed well, you want to add your five grams of cotton and push it under to make sure it's soaked all the way through. Because of the solutions I'm using, the percentages, and honestly the high quality of these, and the ratio of the sulfuric and nitric acids, I've done multiple experiments to test this, and it only takes 90 seconds to nitrate the cotton properly. If I leave it in there longer, the cotton starts to actually get mushy and eventually is completely useless. So I'm going to push it in, time it for 90 seconds, then I'm going to decant the acids off the top here, and then start pouring water into the uh, cotton that's still in here until it's thoroughly washed. I might use sodium carbonate to speed this up a little bit, but I realize when you're cleaning something, sometimes just washing it with a lot of water is the best rather than trying to neutralize it. Then you got to get rid of the sodium carbonate or sodium hydroxide or whatever you're using. So I'll probably just wash it really good with water. We then dry it. And once it's dry, we'll light it. And it should burn very, very quickly. So quickly that there's almost nothing left of the cotton that we like. Okay, I think I've killed this subject as far as talking about it. Let's go do this. Close enough to our five grams of all natural white cotton. 50 milliliters of 70% nitric acid. 100 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid. So here's my setup, my ice water. I've got my bicarb solution, not to necessarily help with the um, deacidification of the cotton, but just for emergencies, always have that on hand. My cotton, five grams here, and I have a syringe here that I'm gonna to use to transfer the sulfuric acid into the nitric acid so we can do it slowly. The sulfuric and nitric acids have been in the fridge for approximately two hours, so they're gonna be nice and cold. And we'll start by pouring the nitric acid into the 250 milliliter beaker. I couldn't place this in the beaker because it became a boat and of course floated around. Here's my 50 milliliters of nitric acid, 70%. I'm gonna pour into it. We'll see if it stays down or not should there we go so i'm gonna let that continue to chill for maybe a couple minutes and then we're going to start adding our sulfuric acid it's been a couple minutes i had an idea here and i'm going to do it i know the bottom of the beaker is resting on the metal but it's also resting on the table which is definitely warmer than anything else so what i'm going to do get all the air out of this thing here there we go let's place that down which is the top of a tin can i drilled a hole in once for something entirely different this way, everything's suspended in the cold ice water. We're starting with a pretty cold temperature of the nitric acid, around 2 degrees Celsius. I'm going to now start dripping the uh, sulfuric acid slowly. As we add the sulfuric acid, as long as we keep the temperature down low, we shouldn't have any nitrous form. So this is going to be a very slow process. I'm going to be pulling it up inside of this uh, syringe here. And then really drop by drop adding it. Like so. Wait a couple minutes, add more, and so on and so forth. So I'll be back once this is all added and everything's cooled down adequately. I place the sulfuric acid in the ice bath, of course, to keep it cold. And as I'm adding this here, I can gently mix it with this stir rod. I've added about half of the sulfuric acid. Um, a couple times the temperature on this wanted to jump a little bit. It got up to about 6 degrees Celsius, but with a lot of mixing... And then swishing the water around so fresh cold water could contact the side of these beakers. It's now back down to around 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. We're at around 2.8, 2.9, 3 degrees Celsius right now. So we're good. I'm going to continue adding sulfuric acid. After a while, I had to put that metal cap under this one here to keep it from floating about. So it's up higher this way. But uh, the temperature, again, has been kept really nicely low. There's only about 10 cc's, 9 or 10 cc's left here. And we can see this is around 3 degrees. It's not focusing great, but you can see it. At this point, I'm just going to remove this beaker. It's empty. 
um, and everything is in this syringe here. And I will continue to add these last 10 cc's here. Adding the last bit of sulfuric acid right now. And that's it. I'm going to mix it good. I usually leave it set for 10 minutes. I don't have a good reason for that other than I just feel like it's better to have it completely mixed and get it as cold as possible before we add the cotton. In goes our cotton. I'm not going to start the timer until I've got it down and these are really mashed down. They're good. Yeah, I probably could have used a couple more grams of cotton. Oh, well, this is good though. All right, that's good. I'll keep doing this. We're going to start the timer. In 90 seconds, I'm just going to dump this over into the ice water and uh, get the cotton out as quickly as I can. nice cotton wad and I'm going to transfer this over now to here which is the other bucket with water in it and work with it some more and then I'm going to take it inside and uh, run it under the sink for quite a while I've been mixing the cotton around in here for a bit now and it's pretty loose it's nice uh, I didn't ruin the cotton which I've done plenty of times as I mentioned I'm going to take a piece of this uh, paper here and uh, pH paper I'm going to put it in the water because it's probably pretty close to... Now, let's see. Let's pull this up like this. All right, here we go. So what do we got? Yeah, it's pretty acidic still. All right, we're going inside the house here to uh, run this underwater. Welcome to my kitchen sink where I put the uh, gun cotton in a strainer and put it above that little tub I had. So I'm going to just turn the water on here. I'm going to let this run for quite a while. And I have a sprayer, <coughs> excuse me, a sprayer which works really well. So we'll leave that in there a good 20 minutes, maybe half hour, squeeze it out a few times, and we'll check the pH. I've been running for about 20, 25 minutes. I'm going to do just a quick test. I have a little thing here of sodium bicarb solution. There is absolutely no bubbling. Nothing. Okay, that's really good. I'm going to let it sit in here for, I don't know, another 5 or 10 minutes, and then we'll check the pH. Okay, I think we're done. I'm going to put this, uh, uh, definitely, definitely a change, no question about that. I'll compare it over here. And we've got anywhere from 6.5 to 7, which is basically neutral out of the kitchen and into the garage so i just grabbed this and ran out here with it i've got to still kind of squeeze the water out and we certainly did a good job there that's pretty good all right i'm gonna start pulling this stuff apart i'll be back in a little bit this is going to take some time i want to make sure i do a good job so i probably overdid it a little bit but i pulled the fibers apart as best i could they're still actually pretty damp so we'll let it dry for quite a few hours i don't know how long and then we'll try it out it's about an hour and a half later i put it by a heater so it dried quickly and it's time to test it not too bad actually just for fun let's do it one more time okay i've seen it burn faster but i'm really happy with the result here